hopefully this will save as another video. We're reading chapter three, everybody. Chapter Ooh, oh yeah. Three. Baby! Alright. Chapter 3. Uh, David. After lunch with Kit Lowell, I take off my headphones. Usually I keep them on between class. Did you say something, Drew? I, I'm rushing to get to the, the chapter because I closed the book. <laughs> oh, God dang it. It's, cha it's a not chapter. It's page 17, Drew. Page. Yeah, I know. I'm to it. All right. After lunch with Kit Lowell, I take off my headphones. Usually, I keep them on between classes so that when I walk through the halls, the ambient noise is indistinct and muffled. That chatter and movement make me feel uh, uh, that chatter and movement make me feel amped up and distracted, and much more likely to trip. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and yet the boys in school dart from side to side, full of random aggression. They jab their fists into each other's backs, tackle necks with smiles on their faces, high-five hard. <laughs> why, why do they want to constantly touch each other? Though the girls don't weave as much as the guys, they also stop and start often out of nowhere, hugging every so often, even though they just saw each other last period. So, Jay. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you think, you, David? Like, do it. What? What, Drew? What so were you saying? So, if you have to do like a public speaking course, I can guarantee, like, you're gonna have to work on when you like mess up something, not going like ah. <laughs> well, no, I was but it. <laughs> no, it's funnier that way. Drew. Funny yeah. that way. Okay, what were you saying? Uh, <laughs> not, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, no. Don't remember. Who cares? Let's move on. I free ear it because I am curious to hear if anyone is talking about Kit's dad. I googled his name and pulled up his obituary, which was uh, in the Daily Courier. Section A16. Three weeks and four days ago. Only three short sentences, which, though I appreciate its succ succinctness, I know succinctness, left out some relevant details like the lollipops and the whole nice man part. Robert Lowell DDS passed away on Friday, January fifteenth, in a car accident. He was born on September twenty first, nineteen seventy one, in Princeton, New Jersey and practiced dentistry in Mapleview for the past 12 years. He is survived by his wife, Mandip, and their daughter, Catherine. Facts thus far learned from my quick shirt. Oh, God. Search. Sorry. <laughs> Should I stop doing that? Continue. One. Kit's dad... Kit's dad's name was Robert, which makes sense somehow. A familiar word, an even number of letters. I've always just thought of him as a dentist, which now I think about it is way too limiting. Two, Kit's dad died in a car accident, which is a misnomer. Because in the ma vast majority of car accidents where people end up dying, they don't actually die in the car, but afterward. In the ambulance or at the hospital, I'll have to find out the specifics. As I walk down the hall, I see Gabriel. Gabriel Forsyth. Curly hair, marble eyes, clown mouth. Notable encounters. Seventh grade. Took my Oreos without asking. Snatched them from my insulated what? lunch bag and walked away. Despicable! <laughs> Tenth grade. Held hands with Kit L. That's not an encounter with me, but it's still notable. Oh, David's jealous. Oh, oh, oh. 11th grade sits next to me in physics because our seats were assigned by the teacher on day one when he saw how far he was from Justin Cho he said oh, bleep! really Mr. Schmidt oh that well it would have rhymed but I'm too Christian to say to say the the s word I'm too pure all right so there, were, which... there was the there was another page where it rhymed wait let me find it and I was laughing really hard Trying not to be annoying. Uh, let me find it. Uh, oh, I can't. It was something about a guitar. 
Okay, well, whatever. I don't care. I, get, I give up. <laughs> For what you got a first warning. I did not point out that the seat was a relatively good one in terms of acoustics and board perspective. Miney said it was good that I kept that to myself. Friends, the lacrosse team, the tennis team, which of course has considerable overlap due to the seasonal schedules. Best friends with Justin Cho since second grade. Additional notes, Miney puts him on the do not trust list. Ooh, even Lauren, the, the smart, beautiful, um, whatever the other third thing was, it puts him on the do not trust list. That is villainy. What? I do not look at him. No, Instead, I keep my... Instead, really? I keep my head... Sorry, the delay is confusing. Speak. Speak! Say what, what? you want to say! Oh, you said you said Lauren put him on the do not trust list. It was Miney. Miney is Lauren. That's stupid? David's nickname for Lauren. Oh my. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I do not look at him. Instead, I keep my head down, con concentrating on keeping up with the stops and starts in front of me. Yo, man! After practice, Plaza P Pizza Pal. Not. Pizza Palace, Gabriel says. Based on the sneakers and the context, I'm 99% sure he is talking to Justin. I will not put Justin's notebook entry here, because I am tired of reading and rereading my notes about Justin, and wondering why he hates me so much. An unsolvable equation. Our notable encounters list is five pages long. He is the president of the Do Not Trust Club. The Pizza Palace is the second best Italian restaurant in Mapleview, according to Yelp. Most people prefer Rocco, Ro, Rocco's, Rocco's. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Rocco's. If Gabriel were inviting me, which he is not, I would suggest we go to Pizza Pizza Pizza, which has two slices Pretty. for the price of one from two to five p.m. And I believe the slight decrease in quality is more than made up for by in value. That said, I do get why they choose the Pizza Palace anyway, which is in no way a palace, just a small storefront on Main Street. Because no matter how cheap the food is at Pizza Pizza Pizza, it feels funny to say the redundant name out loud. Yes? Same. Great. That's what I'm doing. Imagining that Gabriel said, yo, man, after the practice, pizza, 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 and thinking how that would have been ridiculous. When I bump into a group of girls congregating around a, lock <laughs> a locker, Jessica, Willow, who is notably the only Willow enrolled in our 30, 397 student class in our 1,579 student school, and Abby, Miney has labeled them in my notebook in block letters and underlined with Sharpie. The popular B words. When she first used this designation, Miney had to give me a long lecture about how this wasn't an oxymoron. How someone could be both popular, which I presumed meant that lots of people liked you, and at the same time also be a B word. Which I presumed would have the opposite outcome. Apparently, popularity in the context of high school has a negative correlation with people actually liking you, but a high correlation with people wanting to be your friend. After careful consideration, this makes sense. Through in my case, though in not through though in my case, I am both an outlier and a great example of the fact that correlation does not imply causation. I'm nice to everyone, but without an ups with but without any upside. People neither like me nor want to be my friend. Watch it, Jessica says, and rolls her eyes. I Like I bumped into her on purpose. Having my classmates figured out that the feeling has become mutual? They want nothing to do with me? Fine. I want nothing to do with them either. Miney promises college will be better, though I highly doubt it. And what's with all the talking to yourself? Have I began, been talking to myself? 
It's entirely possible and somewhat ironic that my entire thought process about pizza, 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 and what a ridiculous name it is to say out loud, actually occurred out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally, I forget about the barrier between the inside of my head and the rest of the world. Sorry, I mutter to the floor and pick up the book she dropped and hand it to her. She doesn't say thank you. Freak, Abby says and laughs, like that's funny or original. I force myself to meet her eyes, to look straight at her, because mine claims eye contact humanizes me. Again, I have no idea why I need to be humanized in the first place. Why everyone assumes I am some exception to the universally acknowledged rule that we are all human beings with feelings. Still, I do it anyway. Such is the power of Miney. What are you staring at? For a second, I th consider staring, asking, oh, sorry. For a second, I consider asking Abby, straight out, just saying it out loud. What have I ever done to you? I bumped into Jessica, not her. We have no notable encounters, positive or negative. But then the bell rings, and it's loud and uncomfortable, and everything, and everyone is rushing off to class. And I have physics, which means I now have to spend the next 45 minutes stay, sitting next to Gabriel and trying to block out the fact that he smells like Axe Anarchy for him body spray, and taps his pencil against the de desk to an erratic beat. It clears his throat approximately every 35 seconds. No doubt, despite the acoustics and board perspective, I'd have been much better sitting alone in the back. Ooh, throwing shade at, um, I forgot his name, Gabriel. Nice. Kit slip. Nice. Kit slips into class 10 minutes into Mr. Schmidt's lecture on Newton's third law, which I've written down in Latin to keep it interesting. <laughs> Why would you write it down in Latin? Okay, is it, Wait a minute, is this guy Jed Bartlett? Is this guy, like, less charismatic Jed Bartlett? I don't know who Jed Bartlett is. It's the Let president it from the West Wing, and he knows Latin. Jed Bartlett. Oh, okay. Great. Kit slips into class ten minutes into Mr. Schmidt's like Oh, wait, I've already read that. Lost track of time, Kit says, and takes her seat, which is two behind me and one to the right. Not the greatest excuse, considering the school uses a loud bell to remind us to get to class. Mr. Schmidt nods and doesn't yell at her or give her a first warning like he normally would. Once, when we had to make a Shiva call to her next-door neighbors, Miney told me that if different... Miney told me that different rules apply to those who've just lost someone. I wonder how long that lasts. Not the dead part, of course, but the special treatment part. Would Mr. Schmidt allow make allowances for me if my dad died? Probably not. My dad is a medical researcher at Abbott Laboratories. I doubt he's on many people's nice list, mostly because he's not the type of person to make it onto any lists other than the science ones. If my mother died, on the other hand, people would notice. She and Miney are similar that way. Everyone loves them. My mom is always uh, is always stopping to talk to other women in the checkout line at the supermarket or at the drugstore. My mom does that too. One time, she started a conversation with the cashier at Costco. And then the cashier at Costco ended up talking about her miscarriages. I don't, like, my mom is such a people's person Lucas, that that cashier, Lucas, Lucas, like, immediately Lucas, Lucas. opened up. Lucas, is this loss? Is this, oh my god, I, I don't like you, Drew. I really don't. Yeah, I keep you on this stream because of my pity. My pity and my respect for your political... <laughs> in... oh, okay, that was, that was a good noise. She knows the name of all the kids in my class and their parents, and sometimes she'll even add information to my notebook. She's the one who told me that Justin and Jessica were dating. She saw them making out at the mall, and then later that they broke up. This was gleaned, somehow, while getting her nails done, because she shares a chatty ma <sighs> manicurist with Jessica's mom. Mine is aunt the auntie me. She won numerous senior superlatives last S superlatives, sorry. I knew you were going to correct me. 
last year. Most popular, most attractive, most likely to succeed. I did not anticipate winning any. Though I guess Miney and I have one thing in common. Miney is also an example that correlation does not imply causation. She is popular, but not a bee. Unfortunately, she has also led me to question the entire field of genetics, since we share 50% of our DNA. My parents have been married for 22 years, and they are still in love. This is statistically this is statistically remarkable. My mom says opposites attract. My dad says I just got seriously lucky. Miney says mom is a closet weirdo and dad is a closet normal, and that's why they work. <laughs> okay. I haven't put much thought into their marriage, but I like that my parents are still together. I wouldn't have to pack a bag every other weekend and sleep in some strange apartment and have to brush my teeth in a different sink. My mom claims it. My mom claims my dad and I are a lot alike, which gives me re cause for optimism. If he could get someone like my mom to love him, someone who is universally acknowledged to be all kinds of awesome, and not just love him, but love him enough to spend the rest of her life with him, then maybe there's hope for me too. Halfway through class, when Mr. Schmidt starts writing equations on the smart board, Kit stands up and walks out. No explanation. No asking for a bathroom pass. No excuses. She just leaves. And after the door closes behind her, the whispering starts. Justin, that was bad arse. Because I, ca I can't swear, I'm sorry. Annie. She like, she like, needs to talk to us. She's totally shutting us out. Violet. Her Dad died, Annie, as in dead, dead forever. Cut her some slack. Gabriel, I'm hungry. Annie, have a power bar. Why did I say that in that accent? That's not an accent. <laughs> Gabriel, you literally just saved my life. This is how it goes. Conversation swirls around me, and the world all, all feels disconnected. Uh, like playing pinball blindfolded. What does Kit's dad ha dying have to do with Gabriel being hungry? Ladies and gentlemen, moving on, Mr. Schmidt says, and then claps three times. <laughs> For no discernible reason. Before I realize what I'm doing, my hand is in the air. Yes, Mr. Drucker? Can I be excused? I ask. Excused? This is a classroom, not the dinner table. Let's get back to work. Ooh! Slam dunked! Wow. I meant, can I go to the nurse? I have a migraine, I say. Though this is a lie. Miney would be proud. She says I need to practice not telling the truth. That lying gets easier the more you do it. I consider making a moaning noise, as if I'm in pain. But decide that would be overkill. Fine. Go, Mr. Schmidt says. And so I stand up and walk out the door, just like Kit did a few moments before. It's not like I'm going to miss anything here. I read the textbook last summer. <laughs> the, few <laughs> the few questions it raised for me were answered with a couple of Google searches and expounded upon by a free online Stanford class. At me, LMAO. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Once I'm on the quiet, once I'm in the quiet hallway, my brain catches up with my body, and I understand what I'm doing here. Although Mr. Schmidt's class is boring and a complete waste of time, I usually obey instructions. I sit through my classes, mostly keep my mouth shut. Unless I want to bypass high school and get a GED, I don't have much choice in the matter. What I realize is, I want to find Kit. I need to know where she's going. I jog down the hall and decide to head out the front door, ignoring Senora Rubenstein, the Spanish teacher, calling out to me in her heavy New Jersey accent. Adonde vas, Senor? That's not New Jersey. How do you speak <laughs> Spanish in a New Jersey accent? Adonde vas, Senor Draca? No, that was bad. No, that was bad. <laughs> I don't the boss, Senor Drinker. <laughs> That's close enough. I scan the parking lot to my right, which is about six hundred feet northwest. Nor not north. I can't. How do I? I got the exact opposite direction. Northeast of the school's entrance. No kit, but her red Corolla, which is parked like always, 
in the second row, six cars back, space number 43 of the upperclassmen slot is still here. I walk around the school to the football field, which has high bleachers and a decent view of Maple View. Maybe she's sitting up there to get some fresh air. I don't like sporting events. Too noisy and crowded, but I've always liked bleachers. Things ordered vertically from high to low. Did Mr. Schmidt send you? Kit asks. Whoa, was she actually up there? Oh, I thought that was just his guess. Okay, that confused me. Oh, I'm, I'm slow. Don't worry about it. She's not in the bleachers, which is where I was looking. Oh, wait, never mind. Never. It explained it in the next <laughs> sentence. <laughs> All right. She's not in the bleachers, which is where I was looking, but in the concession hut. This is where kids from the student government sell hot dogs and lemonade and candy at football games and at inflated prices. The lights are off, and she's sitting on the dirty floor with her knees pulled into her chest. If she hadn't spoken, I don't know if I would have noticed her. No, I lied to him, and I said I had a migraine. I say, I force myself to make eye contact. It's easier than usual, since it's dark in here. Kit's cheeks are red from the cold. Her eyes are green. They've always been green, obviously, but today they are greener somehow. My, de my new definition of green. Green used to equal Kermit the Frog, and sometimes spring, but no more. Now Kit's eyes equals green. An, ex in 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 an inextricable link. Like how when I think about the number three, I always, for no reason that I've been able to understand, also see the letter R. I wasn't trying to start a ditching trend, Kit says, and I smile, because if it's not exactly a joke, it is sort of related to one. In case you hadn't noticed, I don't usually follow trends, I say, and point to my pants, which are loose-fitting and khaki-colored, and, according to Miney, a crime against fashion. She's been begging to take me shopping for years, claims that I could look so much better if I just put a tiny bit of effort. But I don't like shopping. Actually, it's not the shopping I mind so much. I don't like the new clothes afterward, the feeling of an unfamiliar material against my skin. Kit looks up at me, and then over my shoulder to the school. So you, are you following me? This isn't the nurse's office, she says. I can't make out her tone. Can't tell if she's annoyed. Her voice sounds scratchy, and her face doesn't match any of the expression cards Miney once printed out for me. Well, I mean... In case you haven't noticed, I, I think there's a slight chance that he has autism. I'm, I, I think I'm reaching here, but I, I, I have a theory. Uh, let me just plug that in. Oh, great. I just wanted to make sure you were okay. I hold up my hands, a signal to say no harm, like they do in cop shows. Everyone was talking about me when I left, right? I didn't mean to make a whole thing about it. I just couldn't sit there, suddenly, she says. Clearly, I say. I mean that you couldn't sit there, not the making a whole thing about it. Now that I'm here, talking to Kit twice in one day, when we haven't really spoken pretty much ever, except for a few notable encounters, I realize how off-schedule I find myself. None of this was part of today's plans. Me following her outside, me electing myself the one to check on her, me suddenly redefining green. Unbelievable. He redefined uh, Lucas, green. Lucas. Yeah? Do you think do you think that David watches Rick and Morty? He might. He might. He's smart enough to. I think he has a high enough IQ. He said he has one hundred and sixty eight. I think that's too low. I think yeah, that might be too low. I don't know. Depends. Depends. Well, okay, that's the end of this chapter. Do you want to do another one, Drew? Uh, what time is it? It's 11.40. It's 11.40. Uh, sure. One more, everybody.